Hello again and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elise and first off I want to thank all of the black girls who vlog in YouTube, their Facebook group. They've been trying to like help me sort of like get myself together with this whole YouTube thing. So I just moved into my apartment and I know like there's still some lighting issues. Um, it's currently like 7 o'clock so of course there's like no natural light right now. I did try to like have a light like right at me so you can see everything on my face. This is a book review type thing, so this isn't like makeup or anything, so I hope like that doesn't bother people. There is some shadowing, and I don't know how to quite like get rid of that yet, so please bear with me. Today, I'm going to be talking about what books I've been reading since my last like book review type thing. I've read a couple, I've had, at least I've read like six books since um, I reviewed that, so I'm like I'm on number seven. I'm trying to get to 22 before I turn 22, so that's where I'm at right now. I'm going to start off with the book I read, the first book I read after, and I'm going to try and make this like a speed dating thing because I don't want to give too much away about the books. I just want to tell you quickly about the book and then talk about my feelings and if I would recommend it or not, that type of thing. I'm trying to give each book like 30 minutes or less. I have about four books I've completed in front of me so I can show you what they look like. I have two books on my Hoopla app that I listen to. Um, well, one I listened to and the other one I sent to a friend of mine because I really think she would like it. It kind of relates to her life. And then I have one book that I'm like halfway through, but I don't know if I can finish it. It's just too much for me. Currently, I'm reading 40 Acres and I would definitely recommend that. I'm going to make a whole review on that book because it really pulled me in. And that book, I've, it's 12 hours long to listen to it. Um, and I also wanted to talk about the book app I currently use. So I use this app, it's called Hoopla, and basically you get it through your library with your library card and everything. And I thought it was really cool because I found out today you can actually get um, like albums on there. So you can get audiobooks, comics, movies, ebooks, music, television. So I, you can only do, for my library, I don't know if it's for everybody else, but you can only do six of that category of all these categories a month. So like you can only check out you can check out six books at a time. Um, you can check out, but that's all you can have for a month. So you can only borrow six of anything in a month and then it resets. So I reached my limit today because I downloaded The Weeknd's album, um, My Dear Melancholy, I think that's what it's called. And it only has six songs on it, so I kind of feel ripped off. But I've really been liking it because I listened to Jennifer Lewis's book on there. And just to quick this, I'm going to put hers right now because we're already talking about it. I recommend the audiobook. Everybody in um, Black Girls Read 2 recommends the audiobook over the, the written book because her voice is just, it's amazing. She can sing, she sings in it, she laughs, she cackles, she gets sad. You can hear the emotion in her voice. And that's why I definitely would recommend the audiobook over the written book. Um, and her personality just comes out and it made me really pay attention. I feel like sometimes books are hard for me to stick to sometimes because I just can't imagine someone talking like this and I feel audiobooks really do connect me to that. So her book was really good. I finished that I want to say two weeks ago and actually I finished yeah I finished that about a week ago a week and a half ago. I drove from Virginia to Maryland and I listened to it like four hours there and then I listened to it when I was just like bored in the house and then I listened to it coming back so I really enjoyed it and actually I didn't I finished it before I even came back to Maryland I had to find another book so that's how good it was so I definitely recommend that book and with Hoopla it's free so definitely get it um and I think that's all I read through Hoopla so I just wanted to talk about that book and the other book that I also read is called Just Pretend I'm Dead and that is by give me a second, oh Jen Vegan it's right here in my journal and it was so good. It was basically about a woman who, she was like a maid and she met this guy or whatever and he convinced her to move to Arizona. So she moved to Arizona and like her life just meets these crazy people and it's just so interesting like how her life goes from here to there and everywhere. So I recommended, I recommended that to my friend Crystal because she also is a house cleaner and 
you know, if you would clean at somebody's house, you would find like little funny knickknacks or whatever. So I thought it would be really funny for her to read it. And I'm very sarcastic in person. So that's why I also recommend it to her. But it just really connected with my personality and how she writes. It's like clever and funny at the same time. So I would definitely recommend that. I was even looking for more books by the author, but I couldn't find any more. So I'm going to obviously put like what books I read in the description box and who they're by so you guys can go find them. Um, the next book I read was, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's Shimamanda Ngoza Adichie. I'm guessing that's Nigerian. I always want to say it's Nigerian. But it's We Should All Be Feminists. And look how cute this book is. So I got this at the library. And shout out to all the libraries out there. <laughs> Um, I thought it was really good because it not only talks about women and why they should be feminists, but like men, obviously, like how they can be better feminists. And she talks about also where she comes from, like how even if you're walking down the street and you pay, like you pay to get your car, you pay the valet, the men who do the valet service will look at the men and thank them, even though you gave them the money. And it just talks about the different dynamics when it comes to sex and gender and all of that and how feminism can really unite us all even though it's feminism but it's really for all of us so I definitely would recommend this look how short it is I feel like anyone can read this in a day it's, it's no problem so I would definitely recommend that one the next one I read was I'm not your negro and I did not read all these in order I don't know what order they were in so when I say the next one I'm just picking them off off the floor <laughs> So this one is I'm Not Your Nitty Girl, and this was directed by Roll Pack. So apparently it was a actual movie, and um, the texts are from James Baldwin. So James Baldwin was like a famous civil rights leader, and he was pretty prominent. He was friends with Malcolm X, um, Martin Luther King Jr., and it was one other person that I didn't know a lot about. Um, oh, yeah. Medgar Evans, Malcolm X, and Martin Luther King Jr. So he was friends with all of them, and he all saw them die. Like, I think, not seeing them die, like, physically, but he was, he knew them very well when they died. So I think Medgar, Medgar Evans died first, then Malcolm X, then MLK. I think that's how it went. And they all died within a certain, like, close span of each other. So he talks about those dynamics and how they, how that impacted him. And he also talks about, specifically, their instances and his experiences with them. So I think it was really good. I want to see the the major motion picture. I'm pretty sure it's solely an HBO thing. So I'm going to have to check that out. Okay, we're seven minutes in and I got two and a half books left. So okay, I can do this. The next book I have is Brain by Robin Cook. And I love the author because we have the same last name. And it's about it's about his books are all medical based. So if you're not into medical based stuff, I wouldn't recommend it. But I like how he writes his characters. So they live in a college town, kind of sort of they live in, I think it's either Boston or New York. It's one of those busy towns that has like a ton of um, college students. And this is like at a, they have a clinic just for college students. And he notices that something is going on with them. Like the college students, like they're disappearing randomly. Um, this guy who is a neurologist, I forget his name, but he's a neurologist or a neuroradiologist, one of those things. And he notices that they're going missing. So he kind of like sneaks when he's not supposed to be sneaking and he finds out some interesting things. But it's such a good mystery. The only the only con I have with this book is that you don't find out everything until like this. This is this is this is the author's note. But you don't find anything out until like this, this little part right here. Like you don't really get like you don't really find out the most intricate things until it gets to the very end. So you have to really pay attention to what's going on because he drops little hints every here and there. But if you're not an attentive reader, you ain't miss some things. But he sums it up nicely at the end. It's like, oh man, I should have known that. Oh, I should have guessed. I guessed about halfway through because I was like, there's only so many people. It's like Scooby-Doo, you know, Scooby-Doo. I'm going to ruin this for you guys. But in Scooby-Doo, I think it's always the second person they meet who ends up being the bad guy. So this is pretty much that because you... Not the second guy explicitly, but like, it's like, it's, he throws you a bone and it's like, oh, it's going to be that guy for sure. But then it's not that guy. And it's like, why did you do that? So <laughs> I definitely would recommend this book. I've read some of his other books, but I think I'm going to reread them again as a part of my challenge, just so I'm more attentive to them and I journal them. Okay, so that was that. Next is Barracoon. So in Black Girls Read, read Books 2... 
we actually did a whole talk on this. So if you're really interested in learning about this book, I would go join that group. I think, I don't feel like it's, I feel like it may be limited to black girls. I don't know. Um, but I would definitely read this. It's about this man who was taken from his homeland in Africa after the slave trade had already been abolished in the late 1880s, 1880s, 1890s. And Zora Neale Hurston actually goes to interview him. And this is his story. And the thing about Zora Neale Hurston that I really like, I'm going to try and slow it down because I talk really fast, is that she basically talks how they talk. She uses their dialogue. She doesn't try to whitewash their culture by making sure everything is grammatically correct. She writes it how everything is said to her. And that's important to me as African American because this man, he's using his dialect from where he came from. So I want to read it how he read it. And I think this was edited by someone else because it was just recently re-released because of popularity and people wanting it. So there's some little edits because like cultural edits and just new information that's come out, but it's really, really good. I suggest you read it. And the epilogue, I think it's called the epilogue, the foreword. Don't, don't be sensitive about the foreword because people feel like the reason that it came out re-released is because people couldn't handle the fact that Africans sold Africans. That that happened. It's it's okay. Like it's not okay, but like we all know that. We all accept that. Let's just learn from this man's story, okay, and take with a grain of rice. Okay. And then I think this is the last book I have. I'm pretty sure. I am Yes, this is the last book I have. So this is the book that I have not finished because I'm trying to figure it out. It's called Set the World on Fire, and it's by, her last name is Blaine, Keisha Blaine, and it's about black feminism and how it went through, I want to say through the 20s, and it starts off talking about like Marcus Garvey and his, the, the women in his life. Obviously, they have names and everything. It's not specifically about him, but how they're tied to him and how they branch off and do different things, and I felt like it was a textbook. So if I was taking like a not a world cultures class, but like a minority voices class like I did in high school. I feel like this would be a good book to pull from, but it's not good for casual reading or even just casual intellectual reading. For instance, in I'm Not Your Negro or in Making Malcolm, obviously like there were some important intellectual details, but it wasn't like I was reading a book, like a textbook where I was trying to grasp material so I could study from it. So it was kind of hard for me to, I guess, stick to. So I'm like halfway done. And I don't think I'm going to go back to it just, just to be completely honest because I feel like I'm not really learning a lot from it. And I want to learn or gain a type of experience from it. And I'm not because it's hard to remember. It's so many facts. So it's not like I don't blame the author. It's just that I had the wrong impression of what the book was going to be like. But if you're a teacher or... <laughs> or you like like heavy history, I would recommend it to you. But if you just want something casual, not too heavy, I wouldn't recommend it to you because it's, it's too much for summer reading. I'm about to go to grad school. This is, this is too much. Um, so that's the last book. And yeah, that's this is my reading challenge. I'm sorry for the lighting. But as you can see, like I'm on Goodreads, I rate books sometimes I don't really write like whole things unless it's really really good um oh it even tells me how many more books I need to read so it says read three books per month for the rest of the year to complete your challenge so I've already caught up I think it starts in August I have to read three more books I'm not sure but anyway thanks for watching I'm gonna try and finish this as soon as possible um I don't have a book that's due yet I'm trying to figure out just like subscribe share comment if you're on Facebook and you want to join the Black Girls Read Books 2 group, look it up. It's it's right there. It's an awesome group. I'm going to promote them because I don't have a book Instagram or I don't want to put out my private Facebook because it's it's just memes. Like, I'm just going to be honest. It's just memes. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs>